Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Skull Splitter Military Pick. Uh, the Skull Splitter Military Pick isn't exactly one of the best items in the game. It's actually pretty terrible. Um, we're going to go for it anyway because I have promised to go over every single item, no matter how garbage they are. Um, so this particular item is a military pick and honestly... Every single military pick item of this class has been terrible. And uh, and as we go over this item, you'll you'll see. So right off the bat, it is 14 to 22 damage, uh, which is not particularly high for level 21. It has a dexterity of 33 requirement. It has a strength requirement of 49 and a level requirement of only level 21. Um, honestly, at level 21, 14 to 22 damage is actually pretty garbage. Um, it has 100% enhanced damage, but it does vary from 60 to 120%, so it has a 40% variable, which is kind of silly. Um, Mr. Nee, what are you doing back there? Look at him just floating on the air. <laughs> I got a new cover for my chair, so my chair is invisible. But Mr. Nee, nee is still standing on the chair, and he's not invisible. Um, it has a 100 attack rating on it, which is actually kind of nice, but it also varies. So it varies from 50 to 100 on the attack rating. Um, I don't even know why they did that, because it's not even that good of a weapon to begin with. And making a variable on the ED and the attack rating kind of seems like a slap in the face to anybody who might actually consider using this item. Uh, it also has 1 to 12 lightning damage. Um, and the lightning damage does vary slightly from 1 to 12 to 1 to 15. So it's like a 3-point variable, not even really worth talking about. Uh, it also has 15% chance to open wounds, which is actually kind of nice, but 15% is relatively low, and there are definitely some items that are better than this around the same level. Um, it does have hit blind target plus 2, which in normal difficulty could come in handy, uh, specifically just to blind targets. Um, Whirlwind, for instance, can you use to blind targets, but at level 21, you don't have Whirlwind, so no Whirlwind. Um, we do have Regenerate Mana 20% on here, which is probably this weapon's only redeeming characteristic. If you found this item really early on on a caster type, like for instance a, um, a Hurricane Druid, a, a Fire Druid, a, uh, you know, a Fire Sorceress, Lightning Sorceress, Ice Sorceress, maybe a Necromancer who just was really desperate for some mana, the 20% Regenerate Mana on this is probably the only reason I would ever utilize this item on pretty much any character. Um, and I hate to be so brutally terrible with this particular item, but it just really is not very good. Um, the, uh, the, the ethereal version is 20 to 32 damage, uh, which is still not really that great. And it's uh, 23 dexterity and 39 strength requirement. Now, you can upgrade this one tier. And uh, let's see what happens when we upgrade this at one tier. So to do that, we're going to need a Ral, a Soul, and a Perfect Emerald. Um, and this is going to go from 14 to 22, 33 dex, 49 strength, level 21. To the Crowbill, 28 to 68, 70 dex, 94 strength, and level 30. Now, the level requirement didn't go up so much that it was ridiculous. Um, but the dexterity requirement did go up quite a large amount, which makes this essentially unusable for most caster types around this level. Uh, 94 strength is not too bad for uh, actually attacking base classes, but I just can't really see using this on a melee character over, you know, another weapon. Um, the ethereal version can also be upgraded, of course, uh, with a Ral, a Soul, and a Perfect Emerald. And uh, this will go from 20 to 32 uh, damage, 23 dexterity, 39 strength. All right, and that upgrades to the Crowbill, uh, 42 to 102 damage. It's actually not bad. Um, 60 dex, 84 strength, level 30. The problem with that, though, is that it's ethereal, and you can't obviously use it on pretty much any character. There's no mercenary that can wield it. Uh, so it would need a Zod rune, which is a sight to behold. <laughs> uh, you know, the Crowbill upgraded version with 28 to 68 at level 30 actually might be halfway decent for a melee character, um, but not for very long. I feel like you're going to outgrow this weapon rather quickly. 
It's also a rather high amount of dex and strength requirement for level 30, um, and you're going to be really hurting on vitality um, if you use this weapon, which is kind of a downside. A lot of the weapons that are lower level that have like really, really high strength and dex requirements tend to be really bad as far as like the... Um, tend to be really bad as far as the, the like amount of life that you have after you've finished it. Uh, people who have used Saigons, you'll know what I mean. Like at level 6, if you put in all your points into strength to utilize the Saigons armor, you generally have basically no HP by the time you have enough strength to actually put the Saigon set on. And it's a bit of a downside. Um, let's upgrade this one more time, shall we, to the Elite version. So we're going from 28 to 68 damage, uh, 70 dex, 94 strength, level 30, uh, to the Warp Spike, which is 60 to 96 damage. Wow, that's underwhelming. Uh, 54 dexterity, 133 strength requirement, and level 71. That was really underwhelming. Uh, and then the, the, the ethereal version goes from 42 to 102, 60 dex, 84 strength, level 30, to 90 to 144, 44 dex, 123 strength. So the, the upgrade from tier 2, or exceptional to elite, is absolute garbage, and I would definitely never do that. Uh, the upgrade from normal to the exceptional actually wasn't, like, super duper terrible. And uh, quite honestly, it might be a decent one. Um, as the low-level item, though, at level 21, which is when you could put this item on, it's not very good. And pretty much the only use it has is to regenerate mana that's on it. I feel like they, with all of these items, the military pick, the crow bill, and the war spike, all of the unique items based on this particular class item just tend to be very lackluster in general. And I don't really know why. It's like they decided to pick this weapon out. They were like, we're going to make this weapon the Clob of GoldenEye 007. Um, let's go over to Silo's Pen real quick. And uh, let's take a look and see where you could potentially find this item. I don't know why you'd want to find this item. But you know what? Let's go take a look anyway. So uh, the, the Skull Splitter. Skill Splitter. So let's assume about 50% magic find since it's a level 21 item. And then we're also going to take a look at the bosses first. Uh, so the, boss, the bosses. So ignoring quest flags with the exception of Andariel, um, it does look like normal Diablo is your best bet at 1 in 260. And uh, normal Bale, 1 in 279. Unfortunately, normal Bale is a little bit harder to farm, where normal Diablo is actually super easy to farm. And then Nightmare Diablo, or uh, Nightmare and Dariel is also a pretty good chance at 1 in 306. But Nightmare and Dariel is a, pr a lot harder boss to farm than normal Diablo, especially for a lower level character who may be trying to actually use this item. So um, definitely normal Diablo is your easiest and best bet there, especially since you don't have to deal with the negative resistances of Nightmare yet. And, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, maybe if you were like a 400% like high-level magic-finding character, you know, at that point you would choose, you know, the specific monster that that you think is best. But even at 400%, now you got a 1 in 145 chance on normal Diablo. It's still probably the best bet. Um, let's take a look really quickly at Super Uniques. Uh, so Super Uniques, we're looking at to normal Neolithak. He's kind of a, he's he's like not super hard to farm. You probably could farm him in normal. Um, Grand Visor of Chaos, Infector of Souls, Lord DC. So this just this just hammers down the normal Diablo, for in my opinion. Because if Grand Visor of Chaos, Infector of Souls, and Lord Deceased, which are all required to kill Diablo, can also drop it, then, yeah, you might as well just do normal Diablo. Um, you can also kill Shank here. Shank has a chance. Eldritch has a chance. Doc Farron has a chance. Pindleskin has a chance. Thresh Socket has a chance. All in normal difficulty. Those are all relatively easy monsters to farm as well. Um, if you've never done the Shank 
combo. Basically, what you do is you teleport down and you kill Doc Farron. You teleport up and you kill Shank. And then you teleport up even further and you kill uh, Eldritch the Rectifier. Um, and then once you've killed Eldritch the Rectifier, you teleport up and you kill Thresh Socket, who's at the end of the same zone. And uh, then you go back to town and you kill Pendleskin. And that little combo right there will net you quite a few items and usually gear up your character pretty well. Bink. Anyway, as always, I do appreciate you watching my videos, um, even when we are splitting skulls. And as always, keep watching.